Welcome back. I'm Roy with Rugged Badger Racing and Team Parts Badger. Behind me is the 80 hours to Gingerman Miata. We have 61 hours of this project to go. We've done a lot so far. We have taken the motor out, which is an Ecotech. That had rod knock when we bought the car, uh, but we tested the electronics all work. The motor actually did run. The oil actually looks surprisingly good for rod knock, but we have a brand new motor, brand new used motor on its way. I'm excited about that. We've already prepped the transmission, which is a brand new, brand, brand new Mazda transmission. That's gonna be ready to go. We got a clutch, flywheel, all of that sorted. So we're gonna be ready to go to move that motor uh, when we need to. Suspension's all off the car. We have to push in bushings yet, get the suspension back in the car. But for this video, what I wanna focus on is the radiator, the radiator ducting, and the splitter. So the car came with a bumper and a splitter already, the Nine Lives Racing Splitter. Behind me is the Parts Badger Splitter. Um, what I wanna do is, is see which one we think will be best fit uh, for this car. Uh, we're gonna check weight, uh, we're gonna look at mounting, and then at the same time, we gotta build out radiator ducting, uh, move over uh, back to the stock radiator, make sure everything matches up there, and then get this splitter mounted. So let's get started. cleaned up. have the parts badger bumper right here. Let's get this thing weighed and then we're going to weigh the Nine Lives Racing configuration as well. These are more or less the same types of units. Mine has a little bit more bracing. I think that's going to have to have some added yet. But to make up for that, that one has a couple lights on it uh, as well. So this should be more or less apples to apples. Now I weigh 167 on this scale. And this came in at 196. So we got 29 pounds for the parts badger. This just feels heavier. This setup were 203, 203 and a half, somewhere in that range. So this setup, which I imagine just lifting it, is a little bit heavier. So we're gonna move forward with the parts badger setup. Uh, I know we can take a lot of weight out of this design. Um, currently, we have two layers sandwiched together, um, and we did that because we changed this configuration so many times, um, it started to get weak. The good news is we weren't building new ones because we weren't crashing this one. Um, so at least this one was still running, um, and I guess down the road we'll probably go ahead and, and make one of the single plane versions. I bet you that can take out another six or seven pounds. Uh, but I'm gonna get this thing mounted. Uh, we'll clean this thing up, figure out some bracketry, and then uh, we can start building and configuring the radiator ducting and get that radiator mounted as well. So I stopped working on the splitter uh, last night, just ran out of time. Uh, starting a new day uh, and I have an idea on how I wanna go about this. So one of the tricks with the radiator ducting is that this whole assembly back here, you have these odd angles and you have a pretty significant drop down from here to here that creates a really extreme arc. But what I think I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna seal this to this main bar right here because I have this nice flat flange this whole way across and I can just seal straight from here to the other side of the radiator core support. And then along the sides, what I think I'm gonna do is put channels down uh, actually attached to the chassis independent of the radiator. On my previous design, I actually attached it to the radiator itself. I actually wedged it in between the radiator core and the support here. Um, the problem with that is it's, it's really hard to swap out radiators. And what I'd wanna do is keep this modular. I want, also wanna disconnect the splitter as much as possible from the radiator so that if this thing gets impacted, it doesn't pop the radiator, uh, which, which is actually pretty common. Um, <laughs> happens a lot with these splitters. So as much insulation as I can have between maybe a splitter collision and the radiator, that's that's what I wanna do. And, and maybe I'll even put some duct tape sections in there that have some flex. So not only am I gonna seal this, this top part here, I think down here, what I'm actually gonna do is use these, which are uh, supports for the inside of the splitter. Uh, first, I'm gonna confirm that this works and I'm actually gonna create a cross support here and then down here, and I'm gonna um, create the rectangle 
uh, to go from the big radiator shape down to this rectangle, which will eventually shrink even further down to that rectangle. Um, and then the final opening is about one third the radiator core size. There was an analysis done back in World War II about airplanes and effective cooling. And they said that the inlet for a radiator should be about one third the radiator core size. So that's the rule of thumb I've always followed. I've never had a problem. So I'm gonna do an initial reduction here and then I'll do a final reduction there. And then I'm gonna have a couple different pieces. So I'll have a piece attached to the car. The radiator will be independent. And then I'll have to attach the splitter section to uh, these supports as well. Um, and I think that might provide me the type of isolation that I need uh, to help protect this thing a little bit. So I'm gonna get the uh, splitter back on, just make sure these are in the right positions before I start putting uh, more structure around those supports and then uh, I'll get to it. Making some progress. I have the radiator in and I have some side brackets fabricated. Let me show you. This is the front view of the radiator. I have a, a spare radiator. This is actually from the parts badger car. Um, works fine, but obviously you can see the fins are bent. So I'm gonna put a new radiator in. This is gonna move into the spares. But if you see these channels right here, so I connected those up to the mounting brackets. Just a couple rivets to hold it in place, but then when the radiator's bolted in, it bolts this down. Now you see how this taps here. What I wanna do is connect this hole, this hole right here to this face. And I'll probably put uh, some type of spacer in there so it doesn't hit against this metal, just stays just offset. And then what I'll do is put some weather stripping in here. So when the radiator is put in place, you can come down here, uh, just bolt this down and then this spaced appropriately and then you got a nice seal. And then what I can do is I can use this nice flat surface to connect all the way over here where the ducting is going to be. So what I need to do is create a panel now that can fill this space. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is connect for the bottom, I'm gonna connect the driver's side with the passenger side, a strip across right here and then that's gonna be our bottom. And then if you go out to this panel, there's effectively gonna be a same square, just smaller, a rectangle right here, and then panel, panel, and then a bottom panel. Now on the top, um, I already have that sealed for the most part, uh, except for the tippy top, I'll show you that in a second. But you can see this black panel here covered all of this. So this is pretty much sealed here. And then um, what I'm gonna have to do is actually come down uh, from the main crash support straight down against these here to seal that up. Um, but overall, I think this is gonna work. It's gonna be modular. The radiator can come right out independent of the radiator ducting. And then maybe we just have some duct tape to the nose. And I like this setup. This is much better than the setup I had uh, on the parts badger car. So I gotta make some brackets. Uh, to put across here, and then I can start on the front rent table once that's, that's completed. The radiator ducting is done. Um, I'm really excited about this radiator ducting, which I'll tell you more about. I also have custom mounts for the radiator, which I'm also really happy about. Uh, that'll work with the OEM radiator. It'll also work with aftermarket radiators. And I did some of the prep work on the splitter. So I am five hours into just the radiator ducting and the radiator mount. The good news is I budgeted five hours and I'm really happy with how this turned out. So what I wanted to do is create something that separated the radiator from the splitter um, and something that was modular. And I believe I've accomplished that right here. See the ducting. Um, I have the top panel sealed here. I have a nice bottom channel and I have channels on both sides here. Now, I do need to duct tape the seams yet. That'll take a couple minutes. You can see a little bit of light. But once that's duct taped, you know, this will be nice and, and airtight and sealed. Um, now, if you look at the back side, you can see this is nice and flat from the top of the radiator core support 
down these side brackets and the bottom bracket here. And I have a bolt just holding this in place right now, but these would come out, you'd put the radiator in place. I'm actually gonna put weather stripping all the way around. So I get a nice seal and the radiator just goes in place, two bolts on the top. I have two bolts on the bottom here as well and your radiator's in place. So it's gonna be really easy to swap a radiator. And it's also not directly connected to the splitter because I'm gonna have a gap in the front between this and then the splitter mouth. And I'll be able to either fill that with duct tape or more of this HDPE material. But I'm really happy with how this turned out, especially with this giant AccuSump in the way. I was able to channel everything around that. Maybe I'll get a little bit of cooling on that as well from the airflow, uh, we'll see. I did think about relocating this, um, but there's just not enough time. But I'm super excited about this. Uh, this is probably my sixth attempt at making a radiator duct for the Miata. And every single time it's horrible, uh, but I'm really, really happy with how this one turned out. So much so that I might actually uh, try to fabricate these brackets in mass, and maybe I can produce something uh, that other Miata people can use as well. Uh, so we'll see, but I'm excited about this project. now. Next up, I'm gonna uh, test fit the splitter. I do have uh, four of these um, standoffs. These are from Professional Awesome. I just have to put a couple brackets in place, make sure that matches up with the chassis, and then I'll call the splitter done too. And I had uh, three hours booked for the splitter. Now I'm gonna leave that off the car until the motor's in. I'm also gonna leave the radiator out until the motor's in as well, just so we have a lot of clearance for the engine hoist and then uh, I need as much space as I can get to get that motor back in the car. But super excited uh, about this, and I'm excited to uh, wrap this thing up. I think that's a wrap. I have the radiator ducting, uh, radiator's ready to go in, which I'll show you in a second. Obviously, I'm not gonna permanently install that until the motor's in, but I, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Uh, I did add uh, the mounting brackets for the standoffs, for the, um, the struts, for the splitter um, that hold the ends. So I do need to get longer rods, but I was able to test fit, and then I added a bracket with some adjustability. So I have a bracket here. I have five different uh, locations that I can potentially go to. Uh, all in this one bracket here. So uh, I'm gonna be all set once I get the splitter on, I can just click into whichever one makes sense um, and then bolt that in place. And then these have uh, lock washers and then Loctited um, in there. So I'm really happy with, with that as well. And then the other bracket, I actually found a factory hole, was able to use um, one of the M8 bolts here, uh, go directly into that and then that's uh, underneath this panel. So, let me set the camera down. I'll try to get this radiator in. Show you how that fits. So this has the brackets that I'm gonna put on the new radiator. Um, but this just slides down. So there's a hole on the bottom, which I'll show you from underneath. This one goes real quick here. This one up top. This one, I think I am gonna have to tap the bottom bracket. There we go. I have a consistent gap all the way down the sides, all the way here, and if you can see through the bottom, I have that consistent gap on the bottom. So my plan is to get the appropriate uh, weather stripping to put between here, and then that's gonna seal this up nicely. Um, it's nice and, and isolated, it'll also give it a little bit of a cushion, and that's it. I mean, it's, it's as simple as four bolts, uh, probably the easiest radiator install uh, I had, I know the factory one is, is two bolts, but once you add in the ducting, it really gets, gets messy because you want it sealed right up against that radiator. So I'm super happy with how this turned out. Yeah, so, that, so that's, uh, we'll call that. I'll have to check the clock to see how much time I burned, if that took another uh, hour or two hours to get the, uh, the splitter done. But I'm gonna call that uh, it for now. Really happy with progress today. We still got a lot more to go. I'm excited about when the new motor gets here. We can go ahead and get that configured, get that in the car. And I'm excited about getting those bushings done, get the suspension on. And then it's just odds and ends. So I'm happy with my progress so far. Thanks for, uh, for tuning in, watching this progress.